Hey, it's Moist Andy here, and I just needed to charge my phone up real quick. So while it's plugged in, let me just tell you all something, man. I picked up another pack of nickel metal hydroid batteries, and I just love, I love them just so much because like they they're the best batteries ever manufactured in the world. And they can pack so much power, so much nice electricity into one little package like that. And uh, Panasonic bought Sanyo, which was the original makers. And it, ever since then, the, the separator inside the film uh, that separates the two electrodes has gotten a lot thinner. When, and they coil it up more in the jelly roll, so they pack more of a punch now. And they can last, they're, they're more durable now. That's about the only difference is that they've improved on since like the nickel cadmium batteries were around, which sucked. And they just lost their, their ability to charge up because they grow like dendrite crystals inside of the electrodes coming through, shorting it out. And the, the self discharge rate is too high. So you just have to charge them up way too often. And that's just not at all how these new batteries are made. They're much much better, much nicer. And I run I run all these electric circuits and these oscillators off of it, no problem, with the high voltages spiking through the batteries, and they're still holding a nice juicy charge. Which is pretty nice because I need all of those twelve volts and I depend on that. Um but I do test them with my multimeter. And I, I test whether or not it, like it has an indicator whether or not the battery is good or bad. And it, it's either red or green, you know? So I kind of know how, how good the battery is by doing that. And I figure out which ones could take a charge by analyzing them. And I keep track, you know? I, I keep them organized, at least in, in pairs or groups of four so that I know what's what and how each one's doing and I don't mix any of them up. I did get those CVS rechargeable double A's and I, I think they're kind of the same exact thing just made with a little bit cheaper materials but they output like the same amount of current just for a little bit less milliamp hours something like 2000 as opposed to 2550 milliamp hours of the Panasonic and a loop pro made by Sanyo originally but then Panasonic bought out Sanyo and that's really nice I can appreciate how the technology has has evolved for that but like when I get home I'm, I'm gonna show y'all exactly how you can test your batteries you know which one's nice and and good and very very nice and juicy but you see, the problem with my multimeter is it's kind of cheap. So it only has a 300 milliamp fuse in it. And it's going to burn out if I try to like test the voltage or anything. Uh, that, that, well, not the voltage. I can't test the, the amperage. I can't test the amperage at all with most things on that multimeter because the fuse will just blow. And I don't have a, a nice spare fuse sitting around. I use the last of them. So like, I can show you the voltage because it'll test voltage all day. Uh, no matter what, it'll it'll just analyze between the electrodes the the voltage very nice. You you can test it on like a, a car battery or even like the the mains. You'll be able to see the voltage. It's not gonna break the multimeter at all somehow. I I don't know how that, all that works, but it's very nice to to be able to test while my circuits are operating I can test the voltage between like the drain and the source of that nice transistor I've I've bought packs of like of uh, uh, five or six MOSFETs the IRFP 260N because I thought those would be nice but I've burnt through two of those already just trying to make this fly back uh, and to drive it it's like the the electricity goes all over the place. It's, as soon as you turn it on, it, you can feel the hair on your arms stand up as the electric f 
field grows, ex expands with the ozone blowing around in the air and stuff. You can smell the ozone. It's, it's such a strong ozone smell afterwards in my attic. And so, like, the, f the flyback is very high frequency. Um, it, it, and it, op it, it begins to operate somewhere around 15 kilohertz to 20 kilohertz. Uh, but it does best around, like, 30 kilohertz. It's, it's, like, the most efficient. Gives you the nicest sparks. But those sparks, they go between those pins of the flyback. So what I'm going to do is just bathe it in a little tub of mineral oil. I found some mineral oil up in my cupboard. I'm going to use it. It's just half a bottle. But it's, it's nice insulations. It will protect against the voltage between the pins. Even if I just were to rub it on, maybe paint it on it with a, a brush, it might be better than nothing. And uh, I was going to use paraffin wax, but that makes a mess. And like you got to melt it and stuff on the stove. And uh, I was going to try canola oil, but that, that oxidizes eventually. It rots. It goes bad or something. So, uh, I, I just got to show you all how, how we do this thing, how we can manufacture our own device and fabricate so we can solder together connections between, you know, old components you may have laying around in an old TV set or something like that. You know, you, know, you all got like those big chunky uh, resistors and capacitors and stuff. You get all that for free anyways if you look for it. And so, with that said, like, I'm, I'm going to make some uh, instructional things, give you all some schematics, and hopefully show you how to solder on some nice breadboards with the through-hole soldering technique. I got a nice butane soldering iron, a nice cordless, nice hot iron. It gets like uh, 1300 degrees or something and then I got these breadboards that, are, that it was just a a pack of two of them connected together you could like break them apart if you need to for four bucks at the micro center now they had like other ones that were thicker that you could desolder the components from more easily but those are like expensive like twenty dollars for one like this long and they have packs of five of like big ones with like the, the holes are large but like I don't want something like that because it would it would just be too much wasted space or I would have to chop it in small bits and it, it was pricey too just a, a six dollar would give you two of them.